Welcome to Chateau de Sarzai. We're here in central France, near Châteauroux. We arrived here 40 years ago. My father bought the chateau, and for all these years, the family has been busy restoring the chateau to as close to its original state as possible. And my father is going to take you on a tour of the chateau and show you all the work that's been carried out and the improvements we've been able to make to the site. Hello everyone, I'm delighted to have you here on my estate, home to one of the world's most beautiful fortified castles. You're going to find out and you're going to understand why I'm talking like this. As we go along, we'll come to understand how important this was. There were originally 38 towers. I restored six of them, four in the moat and the ones at the entrance. And I know the location of other towers. But for the moment, we'll have to wait and see because I've been through a lot. Because I come from the suburbs of Paris to get a transfer, I ended up as a meter reader working for the National Company of Electricity. So it's a real drag, a castle owner being also a meter reader. Besides that, I've always been in the heart of all the work to be done. So that was somewhat unusual. I bought the chateau 40 years ago. Well, it goes by fast anyway, but it's a never-ending marathon. And if you stop running, you're disqualified. But then, the providence allowed me to do it all. I'll show you the whole thing, you'll understand. So the ground floor. When I arrived, oh my godness. It was a pigsty, they raised pigs. I redid the floor because they'd cemented it all in. With old terracotta tiles, which I salvaged from the countryside, and the ceiling, this one, well, there was no floor. I restored everything. And here you can see the beautiful fireplace. Very large. You can see the grandeur. And I've carved in it since Georges Sand, in her novel Le Meunier d'Angiboul, describes the coats of arms on the chimneys. That's why I carved this one. It's the emblem of the three severed leopard heads. And these are stones I bought in Burgundy. This one was here, it was outside. So here they were receiving visitors. Well, I furnished it a bit, because in the Middle Ages, castles were furnished. You can see some nice examples here. Here I've put the statue of Joan of Arc. A priest from Tauvet Saint-Julien gave it to me. So I put it there because Joan of Arc must have come here because she went to Boussac. So she came here after the capture of Orléans. She was a bit idle and she came. And it is relevant to show her statue and she lost her sword. She had a sword there. It disappeared. So sometimes when I'm presenting a few swords like this, or like this, so I tell the visitors, I explain, do you see the statue of Joan of Arc? Well, she lost her sword. But in fact, she entrusted it to me. 
Now we're in the second room of the ground floor. This was the kitchen and the less decorative fireplace. It was a bit of a utility room and we found a big curious hole in here. We emptied it by hand. So it wasn't a dungeon. No, it was used to store food. Well, they used to put in wheat or something. And I emptied it all out. I put a grid over it so you can see. And people throw in coins. A bit like the Treviso fountain in Italy. There are fireplaces in all the rooms. Well, I've restored it too. I put up a large fire back I'd brought back from Montfermeil. Well, I've got an exemplary letter here. Written by Georges Lubin. He was Georges Sand's biographer. Let me read you two or three sentences. I have just read with indignation the article published today, instead of helping you as it should have. The historical monuments are putting you on trial like courtelines. They are the ones who have not been faithful to their role because you informed them of your intentions to save this magnificent remnant of military architecture. And so, I would have honored you and helped you first. If you start a petition, I'll be the first one to sign it. Here we are, signed by all Georges Sand's friends. And then, well, a letter from the, the French Historical Monuments Office. In 2001, you applied for a subsidy representing 50% of the cost of the roofing work carried out by Beaufils Company. I would like to remind you that the state subsidies granted. Consequently, I regret to inform you that it is not possible for me to accept your request for a subsidy. The only thing this national office have granted me is the correctional court. I went to the magistrate's court, but the judge and prosecutor at the Chateauroux court had heard of my bold move and that my visitors were pleased about that, but they did not get it. They did not understand this trial of historical monuments. So I was sentenced, but to nothing. 10,000 francs suspended fine. So, finally everything went quite smoothly. Well, there was a bit of interference with the media. Television channels came to have a look. We had a lot of articles in the press. Since then, things have calmed down. Now the chateau is almost back to its original state. Here, from the ground floor, we will climb the stairs and discover these beautiful rooms, which I have also restored. Here we are in a beautiful room on the first floor, always these imposing fireplaces. Here it's the same, I've cut some stones, I redid the mantle that had disappeared. Because in everything I did, I had traces of what was there before that had disappeared. Like these stone benches are called watch benches. Well, they're old stones that I salvaged from the countryside and cut up. 
Then I furnished it. I put in some furniture. These are beds, because there were families living there. The lords, their children, and here you can see all these beautiful beams. That's where I redid everything. I was able to floor it. Well, the big beams, they were there. So let's move on. So another beautiful room. Here the fireplace had fallen into disrepair. But I restored it. They all work. You can light all the fireplaces. The plaster work is original. Well, in a while I'll try to fill in the holes here that are damaged. And in this tower here, the northeast tower, there was the latrines. Latrines in the first floor, second floor, third floor. Look at the beauty of these chimneys. Then there's a piece of furniture. There was no furniture left in the chateau. I found this in the countryside. But it's from, you can see it in the decor. It's from Brittany. And it fits right in. Like this bed. A column bed. Voilà, let's keep climbing up the stairs. There you are, on the second floor. You'll discover another beautiful room. I redid the floor with terracotta tiles, just as it was then, because I found little pieces in the corners. And now we have a beautiful room here too, I restored the window benches. Were comfortable there. They weren't supposed to be chilly. Back then there was no draft. And the fireplaces were substantial. They were comfortable here. They lived here for four centuries. The Barbonsois. That's their family name. And by the 17th century, it was no longer fashionable to live in a fortified castle. So they sold and moved to Chateau de Villegongy. And there, another beautiful room. It's the same here. The ceiling was gone. and this beautiful tiled floor. There you see this beautiful window. I put all these old stones back, there was nothing there. Here, these holes in this table were for cracking walnuts. And then they made walnut oil. No, nothing was missing. Everyone was busy. The castle people were a bit like guards. And uh, staff. Here, a beautiful buffet that I also found in the region. 17th century sideboard. And these column beds. Let's climb the stairs. Here we enter the third floor. It's the same here, we've redone everything. The floors in old terracotta tiles. The fireplaces have been restored. Truly a beautiful room. Well, I'm displaying some weapons. They could have been tools for carpenters and others. 
and were used as weapons. We could call these axes the axes of the Grand Ferret. He was a hero of the Middle Ages who fought the English. We used to read about him in school books. And a similar piece of furniture, I reassembled it. Back then, the floors hadn't been redone. We used a winch and assembled this cabinet. It's a curious one. We can read wardrobe one. First lot for Monsieur. The abbot. These were abbot's clothes. Wardrobe two. Third lot for the charges. The charges were taxes and documents. I put these big barrels up there. I found them at a flea market. Why was this? Because it was thought that the defenders could throw out the machicolations with boiling oil. Is this a legend? It's a mystery. We're in the right place in this room. See all those beams there. Above you'll discover what captivates all visitors, the framework. Just follow me. In this large room, you'll find this superb framework. You can't go in there, there's no floor. It was Gilles, my third son, who redid everything in oak planks because some people say that the frame was made of chestnut. Chestnut is fine, but oak is better. Here you can see the top of the towers. What's this top of the towers called? An enrayer. It's like spokes of a bike wheel. Have a look. It's a beautiful enrayer. Like here too, all the towers though. Still in the northeast rooms, in all the northeast rooms were located the latrines, which I hope to restore one day. Now on the south side, as on the north side, are the chimney flues from the ground floor up to here. We restored all the flues with little bricks I'd found in the countryside. We reassembled the flues and went up on the roof and reassembled the chimney as it should be. These large baskets are called burrows. They were used to store dried fruit. It would keep for a year. Now we're approaching the walkways. It's getting high. You can see the vegetable garden and the village. Some Portuguese friends of mine were demolishing a beautiful house in Rinci. And I salvaged it, tore out all those boxwood plants, which I replanted. These are boxwoods that are almost, are almost a hundred years old. They're happy there. Here you can see the barnyard. The barn is almost a hundred meters long. The barn on the right. And you can see the moat.
to conclude this brief visit. Thanks to the providence that has always accompanied us, We've managed to do what you might call a feat, but it's been going on for 40 years. So now it's time for the kids. Jill, my youngest son is here and he's getting on with the job. And that's it. When I arrived here in 84, I was concerned about the chateau because the ground floor was a pigsty. They raised pigs. The upstairs had no floor. Then I set about restoring the moats because a fortified castle with a water moat is very rare. And I hired a contractor at the beginning. And we found where the walls were at ground level and I put them back up with my children and the water came back in. It's still there. It doesn't rain anymore but the water's still there. So I reassembled all these walls. I reassembled four towers like you see here exactly as it was. Here you see the ground floor of the chapel. Upstairs the priest's lodgings, the chaplain, and on the second floor, a guard room where guards were posted ready to thwart invasions. Now I've redone everything too. The chapel is a cute little fortified chapel if you want to get closer. Stained glass windows given to me by a benefactor. The beautiful medieval terracotta floor came from the Pompone Castle which has been transformed into a policeman barracks. And this beautiful tiled floor has really taken its place. And there are loopholes on every corner, as you can see. There we took in Omphalide. There too. Over there. And the chapel has regained some of its former appearance.